If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first half of the show, we do our normal introductory current events conversation. It's got, the best part of the show. Got a little bit of sports today. We got some sports. Adam listen, brought up. Listen to Sal drop some sports knowledge on you today. <laughs> <laughs> Sal, yeah, you went I, off, man. No, I'm proud of you today. No. Uh, really? You yeah, hung. No, yeah. I think You're I, like one of the guys. You know what I yeah. You know what I appreciate? One of the things I, let me tell you a little bit, a little gratitude right here, right? So what I appreciate, what I appreciate about you so much is that if it's not a subject that you don't know m- much about, you won't bullshit it. Yeah, you don't. No. You won't. You won't. No, no. You won't pretend like you know a bunch of shit out. Like you. You. It's yeah. something that you. You have to feel comfortable with. Like I know it, and where you feel like you can contribute and put your two cents, and you do. So you didn't. Yeah. No. Try I've and got, act I've like you know more than what you know. Bull- <laughs> I've gotten in trouble as a kid. I said bullshit all the time. <laughs> so Golden State Warriors self coached themselves against the Suns for a blowout. I think it was like a fifty point. Yeah. They won like by fifty that, points. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. We talk about California's oversight of homeschooling. California spelled with a K. Uh, mm. We talk about governments tampering with the market and their ignoring of what people really want. And then we did a Thrive Market unboxing. Check this out. I had no idea. If you go to Thrive this Market, is brilliant. there's a drop down menu for different dietary strategies. So you can click on keto, you can click on paleo, and then it'll show you all the options. That in itself is worth brilliant. shopping there just for that. Because I know there's a lot of listeners that are following one of those diets. Yep. It's so badass. Now, Thrive Market ships to your house usually within two days. All the products are non GMO, most of them are organic. We are sponsored by Thrive Market, so we got you guys a hookup. Ba-boom. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, you're going to get one month free membership and twenty dollars off your first three orders of forty nine dollars or more, and free shipping. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, "What do we think about if somebody wanted to get fit with shoes from a gait analysis specialist before addressing issues in the feet and imbalances?" In other words, do we think that's a smart strategy, or do we think it's does that guy at the mall really know what he's talking about? Dumb. <laughs> the next question was. This particular individual seems to be flexible. They can stretch good. They've got good range of motion. But then they feel tight all the time, every day, no matter what. Anyway, what the hell is going on? Is it still lack of flexibility? Or are are they just stress cases? The next question was, all of us here at Mind Pump have been training for a long time. I've been working out for over 25 years. Adam and Justin for not that much shorter. Uh, In what direction... Do we see our training evolving, our own personal training evolving in the next 5, 10 to 20 years? And where do we see ourselves from a business standpoint? How many billions of dollars do we think we'll make? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll catch up to Bezos. Yeah, we then didn't. the final question directed at Adam. Somebody wants to know what his activity looks like since he's been uh, hampered by his Achilles tear. Now, us here at Mind Pump, quite impressed with how Adam has been handling himself during these difficult times. So Adam talks about that a little bit and also talks about his strategies while he is uh, incapacitated. Hmm. Also, two days left for the MAPS HIT launch. So MAPS HIT is a program, a MAPS program, designed around high-intensity interval training. This is by far the best Fat burning program that we have. It's six weeks long. A combine taste of the crazy. You combine this with a good diet, you'll see some pretty profound effects. If you don't want to get leaner, Maps Hit will build crazy cardio stamina and strength endurance. So it's also great for conditioning. It includes uh, flow sessions, which are unique mobility sessions specific to Maps Hit. It's not in any of our other Maps programs. This program also comes with three levels, whether you're more towards a beginner, moderate, or if you think you're a badass, go for level three. It's all in there in Maps Hit. We are giving you $20 off the- You just challenged me, sir. You're getting $20 off the program and a free t-shirt for the next two days. This ends Sunday. Now, what you got to do to get the discount and the shirt is go to mindpumpmedia.com, enter the code HITLAUNCH, that's with two I's, H-I-I-T-L-A-U-N- CH, you'll get $20 off and a free t-shirt. Again, it's at mindpumpmedia.com. Zippity-doo-ba-dow. Do it. 
Do a little music with that. The, sprig? Uh, my sprig? No, not you. No. no, I know not me. I mean, are you telling him to do the sprig He's thing? He's doing the, what do they call that? Be Scatting? Swaddle, buddy, da, boo, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, that kind of music to me, and I, I doubt I'll offend anybody, but if I do, I don't care. Is the most bullshit music I've yeah. heard of. Yeah. Hibbity bibbity bop. Yeah. Skibbity doobity bop. Scootoop boodop. Yeah. And now there's a kind of like it. They just make shit up. Yeah. That's you just, not you fucking just go. Music. Come you know, on, like, man. Like, whatever be, the fuck comes out of your mouth. It reminds me of art where people just, <laughs> and now I'm going to offend people, throw <laughs> shit on a fucking canvas. It's that splatter stuff, right? So yeah. me and, me and uh, Jessica, God, when was it? We were, I don't remember where we were. And it, it I don't remember much, except I do remember we were in an art gallery, and there was some spectacular art there. And then there was art where I'm just like looking at it, and I, I, I swear to God I could do that. like, Or anybody could. There's nothing. Yeah. It's just fucking paint. It's like somebody took a poop and then just I put it with, in like a box. I think like, with a lot of like art like that that you see in museums, I think a lot of it has to do with the history, right, and who it was. I, think, I don't, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, like I feel like if I like just. I don't, think it like, I don't think like someone super famous did like a splatter paint thing like you're explaining and then all of a sudden then he became famous. Yeah. I think he was famous for other things like painting. Probably. And, right. And then and then it's was probably a, a historical time or the, the painting was at a, a very uh, memorable time for him in his life. Where That's so, a good point. Right, so like, if you've done something like if you're uh, infamous, like let's say you're a bank robber um, and you've never gotten caught, in, caught, excuse me, and then you get caught and you make a painting, you're going to make money off your painting. Mm. Because oh, this is that dude that robbed like ten banks. This is his uh, painting. The and association of it. Yes, yes. you know what I'm uh-huh. saying. Yes, so yes. I'm thinking I'm. Gonna, this may be a strategy. Make a painting, uh-huh. of whatever you fuck you want, yeah. and then do something crazy afterwards. And then people will be like, "That's the guy that ate uh-huh. his own shit on TV." Whoa. And then he made that painting. Yeah, or something like that. Hey, listen. Hey, listen that. up. This is I'm gonna hijack your current events today. Because uh, I figure if we if we get is to that because you're high yeah. high <laughs> hijack. <laughs> Not yet. I just started sipping on that spring. Those springs are good, man. No, Uh, they're not. Oh, my God. They're good. They're dangerous. They're 45 milligrams of THC Uh, in a can. I feel like they round up. It tastes like Sprite. We'll find out at the end of this episode. (laughs) We'll we'll know at the end. By by the end of this. So I'm going to hijack you a minute on, and and since you you get a chance to, uh, if, if we get to throw politics every now out there, which I feel like we've been touching that third rail a lot lately. I get to throw some sports in there every yeah, once in a yeah, while. Yeah, you put you put us like in a corner. The yeah, last the uh, yeah, the other, cloth. The other, a lot. Right. The other day he's like, "Come on, man. Let's let's ask his, yeah. <laughs> let's answer this really controversial question." Justin Adam, what do you guys think about well, that? Well, you know what? You know what? <laughs> totally puts you under the griddle but here. Before you continue, Light I did want I did want to ask you guys your opinion on abortion. Before we <laughs> seriously, like, that's about <laughs> the next level. Like, right. where do we go from here? All right, go Adam. So, Bring us some sports. Okay, so I I I'll, let me let me tell you so I can keep because I feel like you can actually discuss this with. So we can have a really intelligent conversation around this, even though you don't follow a lot of sports. So the Golden State Warriors are setting all kinds of records. They have been for the last three, four years as far as wins. Uh, they're going for their third out of four years, another championship this hopefully this year. Uh, destroy their top, their number one again this year in wins. They're coaching themselves. Oh well, yeah. so I this, heard about that. this is what happens. So yeah. this is what's this is the and it's major controversy right now. It's it's all there's a bunch of shit around this. Now let me explain what happened, and then I'll, I want to hear you guys' opinion. So I'm watching the game, and they pan over, and you see. Well, actually, let me back up here so you guys understand what what's been going on with the Warriors the last two weeks. So, Warriors win streak. They set that record last year. They've done. They broke all these records. When they're destroying it this year. Well, the last couple of weeks they've lost a few games, and the Warriors losing two or three games in a week or two span is a big fucking deal because they've been dominating that much. Mm, yeah. So what happens in in sports when that everyone starts freaking out? Oh, is this happening? This yeah. and that. Start all blaming everybody. Right, right. All this. Board, everyone starts but... speculating, and so there's been a lot of these um, interviews and talks around this. Mm-hmm. And you know, Steve Kerr has alluded to. This is All Star Break this week, right? So we're heading down to LA ourselves during All Star Break. Right. So this is uh, that's coming up, oh, and that's it's kind of everything's so expensive. It's kind yes, it's kind of like when you're about to you you've been working hard and you're about to go on vacation. The last three or four days of work, you're kind of checked out. So athletes are no different. When you get when you get to these mid breaks that they have in the season, where they actually get a few days to go see their family and stuff. A lot of times you see the athletes kind of dip, you know, especially yeah. if you're fucking dominating it in first place. So this is what's been what has been happening with the Warriors right now. And so and Steve Kerr being a little frustrated and shit decides that he's going to have 
the players coach. This has never been done, by the way, not in NBA. Like uh, I think so Joe during Tor- the game, he just has. So yeah, I've the- never heard of this. Never. And I'm watching it live, right? And then all of a sudden, they pan over, and uh, the announcers are talking about. They're like, "Oh my god!" Like. Look who's running the, the the plays, and you see one of the players at the time that are is in the huddle, and he's like running the plays, and so it was. Everyone's talking all positive about it. It's like, oh, this is so brilliant by Steve Kerr. Like, oh my god, and I'm thinking the same thing. Oh man, he's the fucking man. This is so rad that he's doing this. Let's see what happens. Well, that's like you know, I don't know. It's like the end of first quarter when you first see this. Well, they end up fucking thumping the Suns by 50 points, like 47 or something. Now, is that something that's expected anyway, or is that... So, okay, they were... Yeah, they should have won anyways because they're they're a shitty team, right? And so but is this, that an out-of-the-ordinary be- beating? Yeah, yeah. 50 points is oh, a lot in the NBA. The spread dude. was... Okay, so, uh, you know... So, the spread the was 16 points. They were supposed to win by 16. Wow, so that's a big difference. Yeah, it's a big difference. Four times right? more. So here's the deal. Here's where all the controversy is coming from. So a lot of people think that's kind of like when uh, college teams or sports teams run the score up and it's disrespectful to the other team it's like and it's this generation now that's like this that wasn't like that before wait a minute wait a minute my feelings wait a minute hold on a second people are complaining and saying it's disrespectful that they won by 50 yeah well that and they did it by having the players coach right so there's there's all this talk right now did they cheat no what the right why are people come this what's going on here Yeah. yeah in the world People yeah. are actually complaining. They're so sensitive that they won by too much. Let me tell you something about competition. If you're in a competition with someone and it's fair, and you're following the rules and the rules are agreed upon, so I'm not talking about cheating, I'm not talking about stealing or anything like that. Your duty as a competitor to yourself as a human being to respect yourself is to fucking do your best. That's it. And if doing your best means you win by a thousand points, then you do your best. If it's if the other person wants to quit early, then they quit. You shake their hand. You say, "Hey, appreciate the game. That was awesome." And that's it. And you go yeah. your own different way. So this actually, uh, I and I'm I'm gonna kind of like speculate here, but people that had a problem with it, if you think of like if I'm playing ping pong with my right hand. Right, and right. I and I'm dominating, but then right. I, all of a sudden you switch to your left. I switch to my left, and then I'm still like dominate. It just makes that that competitor salty, right? That you're embarrassing them. Well, well, that's yeah. so a, that's they, a, they feel embarrassed, yes. and so like they should be. I'm sure, yeah, exactly. It, this ha- I remember. So my first year, we used to play um, in a softball league, and the very first year I got into it, I'll never forget. This was hilarious, right? So I've got all my boys. We're all athletes, right? We all played sports growing up. Uh, some baseball players, basketball, football, just a mix, but all athletic dudes in their like mid twenties. So we're still feeling like we're in our prime and shit. And we decide we're going to start this softball league. And we go down over here to Twin Creeks, and we literally have this discussion. So when you sign up at Twin Creeks or at any softball league, you have these options for what level. Bro, I played on your team. A, double A, triple A, D, or whatever they they name them different shit. But you have four levels, right? One being the the best player. So you you're supposed to like put yourself where you think your team should be like, well, we're all athletes. So we automatically, we're going to put ourselves in the first one. We're like, you know what? This is our (laughs) first time doing this. Uh, Let's not put us in the, you know, first level. Let's do the second level. Because we don't know. You don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Like we could be getting a little cocky and who knows who's out here playing softball. Right. And you want, you want a challenge, but you don't want to get blown out of the water. Right. You want to have a good. Right. So we decide to do this. So we get in the, the, and we put ourselves in the second, but then we have a little huddle before we start. We're like, listen, don't just come out crushing you guys. You know, play. Let's kind of feel the game out because we don't want to. We don't want to look stupid, and embarrass these guys, and end up being looking like a bunch of dicks that should be up in the upper which, league. Which, by the way, is different, right? Because the NBA is the best. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So you, that's different. That'd right. be like yeah, no. Competing. But listen, but listen where this goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's gonna <laughs> so, go sour. So we get out there. Second inning, we're getting spanked by like 19. Yeah. So we got all the guys up, and I'm like, hey, if you guys weren't playing, we need to start playing. <laughs> we need to start playing right now. So. We go about three games into the season, and we're getting our asses handed to us. <laughs> I mean, there's there's dudes out there's old men out there that have just been playing oh, like take for thirty it years religiously. Together. Yes, very and yeah. just very strategic about it. Yeah. You know, we're just a bunch of jocks that are out like there trying to crush crush shit. the ball, popping up all the time. Yeah. Oh, we get our asses handed. We end up having to drop all the way to the bottom league, and in there it was competitive. It was competitive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, like, well, I just thought that was funny, but so. These guys, the team that was beating us the first time, 
they played for West Valley. So it was the whole baseball team on the, in the off season. These guys all get together and play softball. They drink beer and fucking play ball together. Halfway through the game, when they're already whooping the shit out of us by twenty something points, they start batting switch hitted. Every batter comes up oh. and is batting the opposite side, and we know oh. because we just we already got our ass kicked from them on one side. Then they're going the other other direction, batting and yeah. hitting oppo fucking home runs. Yeah. Just killing us, dude. <laughs> uh. So, you know, there was a little bit of us that was irritated, right? Because we're like, you f- you guys are fucking baseball yeah. players all they're, on they're a baseball team. With you. Yeah. And you're fucking up all these, like, da- you know, weekend warrior dads and shit, you know? Yeah. So, But you know what, though? Again, that's... Y- 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 if that's you, you entered into a league, right? It's not a professional. It's not a professional. No, this level. is the NBA, man. You're in the NBA. You know what's going to happen in the NBA? You're going to play the best yeah. of the best. And so, if you're not on that level, that's your own damn fault. No, well, man. And, the, and the shitty part is, you know, I and I don't, I don't know Steve Kerr. I, I watch all the games and I watch how I love how he coaches. I love the organization. I think that what the Warriors are doing from top down is awesome. And he's he does not strike me the guy that did it out of. Let's just because they he did it from the beginning. It wasn't like they were pounding them. Let's have yeah. some fun and goof around, and then let's. That, do- that does make a difference. Like if he went halftime, right, and, and then came in and was like everybody was coaching themselves. What it kind really, of a dick what, move. what it really was, was him trying to get his players engaged because they've been checked out for two weeks. Right, right. They're cruising and still beating people, not caring some of that. So it's like okay, if you guys and you guys are losing some of these games, you're not going to lose this game. No, it's brilliant because it, oh, it, it gets everybody's focus in and being present and yeah, like so now they have to actually have strategy and like implement it in the game and you know it gets everybody involved which is the dude that makes perfect sense anyways i had to bring it up because it's never been done in history yeah. i've never seen ever seen anyone do it now i know uh i think joe tory did it for the yankees one season so baseball's done it but this is the first time I, we've ever seen an nba coach do something like this i just thought it was a brilliant strategy i thought it was really really smart and it obviously worked. I mean, they whooped the fucking shit out of them. So, I mean, I think it's just so crazy to hear all these pussies that are getting all pissed off about it. I'm like, come on, dude. Get out of here with that shit. It's your responsibility. I don't know. I, th- I feel like it's your responsibility if you're a competitor to... I don't like how you did that. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't like how... You, you should have beat me not so bad. Like, you're yeah. such a crybaby. Yeah. I wouldn't want... You know, what's weird to me is I would never want that. I would never want someone to beat me and then be able to tell me like, oh, I didn't even try, bro. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to embarrass you. So I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Like embarrass That's me. That's worse. That's is worse. Yeah. Oh. Holding back on me and still yeah. beating me is worse than you giving me everything you got. So I at least have something to measure up against. Like if you give me everything you got, I lose by 50. At least I know where I stand. Like, right. that's how good you are. That's how good I am right now. I got a lot of work to do. But if you beat me by 10 and then I find out that you didn't, you were half-assing it. Like I, that's not. I'm not gonna grow from that. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna think, man, I'm almost as good as the best right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna. It's gonna inflate my that, ego. Actually, Shit, that actually, was close. it could be a strategy. No, it could be a strategy to not beat someone as good because you don't want them to know how good you really are, so that they don't try as hard. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. It could yeah. be. There's a strategy either way. <laughs> Shit. Or just crush their soul. So that's I got. I, like I got a little uh, uh, current event here. So in California, they are. I'm gonna read this here. There's, they're trying to put forth these laws where California lawmakers are going to make it where if you homeschool your kids, they are going to come visit you. The state will come visit your home every month to check on what you're doing with your kids. What? And this, okay, so do you guys hear about what happened recently with that, 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 those, that couple that they were discovered to have, they had like 12 children and they like abused the fuck out of them. Oh, I did hear them. that. I did hear that. So they abused them. They starved them. They're just terrible people. Horrible, horrible people. But they also homeschooled. So one of the things that- So go- now we think all homeschoolers well, do this? Well, one of the, one of the <laughs> things that, 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 that government loves to do is they see an opportunity and, and that opportunity, they, they seize it mm-hmm. in a way to get more control now get over people. Control. How controlling is that when the state says- a, we're going to control education for most people, which is, by the way, a bad idea because, you know, the government controlling education. What could possibly go wrong? Mm. That's number one. But then number two, you want to homeschool. You you can, but war, the state still is going to come check on what you're doing and what you're teaching and what's going on. Why for the, the hell safety. does that matter if, if they're getting the same tests and assessments? You know, like their performance should speak for itself. I, I th- The reason why they want to do it is they're saying for the safety oh. of the kids because of what happened recently, okay. so which what, is bullshit, yeah. which is total bullshit. It is a total intrusion of liberty and freedom. And 
no government anybody should come into my well, have the right to come into my fucking house. So for house. somebody at me that didn't hear the story, could you kind of sum it up, you know, somewhat as far as like what they found? Like, so there was abuse, but they like, were like starved and chained. A couple of them were chained oh to the God. bed. I mean, it's, it's it's a it's a horrible. I couldn't even read the whole article because it bothered me so bad. Yeah, it's absolutely uh, disgusting. But but what does that have to do with education? Because they homeschooled their kids, and so they're trying to say, if we had this. In place, we would have discovered this earlier. So here's the thing. Here's the here's the thing with uh, with yeah, but the, that's just a be- like I don't I just don't see I don't know I don't see the correlation there with like how to like how they like decide okay now that's a managing yeah are issue. they are they open it's not a managing issue that's like abuse that's like uh, that's see, right yeah are it's, they openly saying that are they openly coming out and saying like this is why we're going to mandate this because yeah they're saying happened. because we need to ma- ensure the safety of these kids and make sure everything's being done right. Because, of course, they own you and your kids. You know what I'm saying? They're not yeah. your kids. It's the right. state's kids. But it's what they, what they do and what they do very well, and people fall for this, is they see a situation that happened that might be terrible, and then they go back and say, if we had done this, we could have prevented it. If we had, you know, and this is with gun laws, this is with any type of a law that's well, going to infringe like on us. It's just like one case of, of a shitty person doing horrible things. Listen, there's, there's horrible people. First of all, was it legal what the people did to their kids? No. It was already fucking illegal. Looks like it didn't work. They still did it. You know what I'm saying? It's still a horrible thing. It's not for lack of government oversight that those people got away with what they were doing. Right. It's, be- it's because they're terrible people. And for sure, no way. And of course, in California, they're going to do this because we're the most uh, authoritative with this kind of stuff. They want to crack down on homeschooling because- Homeschooling and non-public schools have exploded over the last ten years, and public school attendance has gone down considerably. Yeah, that's to what the it po- feels like to me. Cause... In San Jose, they've shut. They've actually closed quite a few schools because they don't have enough students uh, showing oh, up. It's like pandemonium when when your kids aren't at school. You know, like they they all keep like tabs and make sure everybody's coming in because they get, they paid. get money. They get paid per head, right? They yeah, get paid exactly. Yeah. California averages around. Here's a number for you that you might want to look up, but I'm almost positive on this one. I'm almost sure. It's about twelve thousand I believe about twelve thousand dollars a year in funding per student per for public school. So your school is making when your kid goes to school, they are making for for your and remember school year isn't the whole I wonder year. how many parents would, would figure out homeschooling themselves if they could get ten thousand dollars a year given to them. What do you mean? Like of it, course, right? Like, of course. <laughs> like if if the government said like since we're already spending twelve, what if we spent ten, right? Save two grand Bro. and offer it to you. Say, listen, I you know That'd do you amazing. have yeah. do you have someone in the household who could potentially stay home and do the kid or I you- pay about that much. I actually, pay a little bit less than probably the public schools get for my kids to go to a private school mm-hmm. and the school my kids go to. Superior, it's superior the, to the schools that I belong to. Now, that's not to say that there aren't oh, better really? public schools, but. If you want to talk about inequality, because people love to say that, like, no, these public schools, they provide equal, blah, blah. it's not true. The greatest segregation and the most inequality you'll, you'll see ever, and it's devastating effects, is public schools. You can go in a public school in an area, and it's going to have, you know, metal detectors and cops at it and teachers that don't give a shit and kids that are fucking doing terrible, terrible things to other kids, and nobody seems to care. I, I, and thank God for the internet, because you can see videos of this kind of stuff. And you also have public schools where you walk in and it's super posh. They have everything provided to them. Teachers are super on board. Everything's great. So the inequality is just fucking insane and dramatic. And people are stuck with their option because if you're right. by so, proximity, yeah, that's it. If you're if you if you're thing. if you can't afford to move into a super expensive area. The, and that's your school, which sucks for a you, kid, who, a kid who's born into a family like that, who's already at a disadvantage, and then on top of that, you get thrown into a school where you're at another. Then they disadvantage. feel like they have no way out. Right? They have yeah. these situations where they'll have these charter schools or whatever, which are semi-public, semi-not, and they'll have to they'll do a lottery where they can include kids from all of all different areas. You should see the the moms and dads that bring their kids that just beg. For mm-hmm. their kids to be able to go to these schools, many of them single parents, many of them disenfranchised or you know underprivileged or whatever you want to call it, and they're just they can't because there's no room or whatever. What if instead of public schools where you have to go to these schools, what if instead and we used to experiment with this by the way, this is actually in some states do this, not a lot. 
California used to do it in some areas. What if instead of the school getting twelve grand per year for your kid that your kid is forced to go to and there's no other choices besides you taking them out and spending an extra whatever, what if they gave you a voucher and they said, Here's your you know, voucher, voucher. it's worth ten thousand dollars or twelve thousand dollars for the year. Shop around schools. You have to use it on education Mm because I know the state likes to control. Oh god, that would be so bad. That'd be so (laughs) badass. It would it would because what would happen is the shitty schools would lose kids and lose money. And the good ones, good ones would have to yeah. expand and explode or whatever. And even we might even be able to expand what that means for education. So maybe my twelve thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar check or whatever doesn't have to go to a school that teaches everything. Maybe because I could see this oh, happening you do in like the market. A trade school or yeah. something cool like that. I could yeah. see this happening. I could see where you have like you know my my kid takes his math from this mm-hmm. and that costs three thousand dollars a year. And he gets the science over here, and that costs another five thousand dollars a year. And then they do this other outreach program, like that's specialized. It, uh, yeah, of course, S- education. Of course, yeah. you know if if that that's probably the best way that I can think about it, especially with the internet. Dude, that'd be rad. It would be so rad, but nev- no way would they want that because no. Now you're talking about, uh, and you know what the the argument is? Well, what if some schools don't want the students? What if some students or whatever? Bullshit. There's a market. There's a market for all of these different types of things. And of course, we can you know we can manage it however we want. But I think if we give people more choice, you're going to see parents take better control. And, and here's the thing: I know there's shitty parents out there for sure. But at generally as a whole, I'll make I'll take I'll make this bet all day long. I will bet fucking my house. I'll bet everything on it. That generally parents will make better decisions for the kids than the state will make for their kids. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. sure every parent agrees with that because you, you, I mean, the state doesn't take good. They don't, they don't, they're not their kids. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Now there's definitely shitty parents out there for sure. But I think there's a lot of parents out because here's the thing about education is that, you know, if you want to stop the cycle of poverty, stop the cycle of criminal, you know, criminal activity, it starts with education. And unfortunately when kids are poor, there's their school options are terrible. I mean, a lot of these kids go to these schools and fear for their lives, or they have to become what they fear in order to survive, or whatever. They have horrible right. options. Absolutely terrible. Imagine if a parent who's a good parent but's got to work a lot. I'm a single parent. I got this. You know what? I'm gonna find the best fucking school for you. And if that school doesn't do a good job, I'm gonna tell the school I'm gonna take my voucher somewhere else. Mm-hmm. What do you think they're gonna do? Right. You know what I mean? Right. They're gonna try a lot harder. So it's empowering. I mean, the thought of that. You know, for parents, but yeah, we just we just give it all. The out question the is, state. how do we how do we break out from where we're at now? Because just like we were talking about, what were we talking about yesterday, where, where we said like you just can't go one extreme to the other like that. Welfare. It's, oh, that's right. It was welfare yeah, yeah, we were yeah, discussing. Yeah. This is the same thing. It's like you're not going to be able to go. <laughs> These from, are monstrous issues. This yeah. is not extreme. It's not an extreme. I think you could go from where we are now to a voucher system. You could do that overnight. Well, then, what would you do? Privatize all public schools? Then? No, all all public schools remain public, and they can remove they they receive funding. Yeah, they from just these be vouchers. able to shop around, and you so can, they'd have to like yeah, right. Drive now, their kid to somewhere else. Secondary, legislation. yeah, but that would inevitably put out. If let's use San Jose for an example, because yep. we have like fucking twenty <clears throat> high schools or more. That's right, right. So it would it would for sure. The first year, put out like ten schools. Oh, the the cream of the crop would rise. Though. I I you think know? there'd be com- yeah, there some would schools be, would suffer for that's sure. Right. Oh, there'd be competition. I, I mean, they would die the first yeah, year. The first year, you would see, and th- that's what I mean. There but would it be a, weeds them out. I, I am not disagreeing. I'm just yeah. saying that it's not as easy as you think it is. Of that would be not. a massacre. There'd be a, there'd be so uh, many. Uh, there'd be uproars from the teachers. Yes, from the you staff, would see teacher. From, you would yeah. see teachers picketing and shit like yeah. that. It would be insane because, for sure, at least half of those schools, maybe more. Would lose everything. Would lose everything because they wouldn't be able to keep it up, right? They wouldn't be able to keep their doors open because they're already in the bottom five. Because they don't deserve to be open. I agree. I agree. I agree with you. But here's one of the worst. I mean, we are we are also the 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 the, the fucking country that gets pissed off when fucking you know we we let a a bunch of players coach each other and well, the thing has to get mad about score being fair, fair, fair. Yeah, here's here's what I'm here's what I'm saying with this. One of the worst things you could do in a market is prop up a business. Uh, that the market doesn't support. That's a horrible, terrible waste of resources and wealth. Yeah. It's terrible. When the U.S. you know auto industry tanked because they were sucking and they couldn't compete, and we wanted to save, quote-unquote, American jobs by giving them 
taxpayer money. Do you know why they, they suck? They, that's why they went under. That's why they suck because they because American taxpayers didn't want to buy their fucking cars. Right. So now you're going to force us to do that just to prop up these 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 jobs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now I don't care if afterwards they became profitable or whatever. That period of time was extreme waste of wealth and inefficiency. Well that's where you go back to what you talked about the other day about how politicians spin that on I'm saving American jobs. You know, big Toyota, Honda, Honda comes in and they're putting our American jobs out and fight for fight for America and let's let's do this and that's how they get shit like that. This you know is so but nobody yeah. thinks about real economics and what happens to us when we really it's do a that. waste of, it's a it's a massive waste of well so they've done studies on this and they'll show that when we do these kind of programs where we're trying to save jobs, save American jobs, it, it'll cost American taxpayers like fifty to $150,000 per job saved. Think of the waste on that. That's insane. That's yeah. absolutely insane. It makes no sense. So, And here's the thing. Most people it, don't even make that per year. And you're, you're, yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know what it is? It's that the market, this is why people don't like it. I'll tell you why. The market reflects society, and sometimes people don't like what that looks like, and so right. we want to pretend like it no. That's ex- exist. that's the exact example right there. Let's be honest. All, most of us, or and I'm speaking as a whole or as a country, like uh, Japanese made cars. You know, they they make fucking great cars that go for Long hundreds lasting. of thousands of miles, and you get a great bang for your buck. They've done an incredible job out of it, and so most of us buy that. That's and, right, and right. so. That is an example of that, and I think that's such bullshit. And that's dude. what I mean. It's a reflection because then what happens is- Right, it makes us look bad. It's like, we see what's going on. We're like, oh my God, America, uh, these American auto manufacturers or this American company or whatever is failing. We need to save it because it's American. And it's like, take a step back, dude. Yeah. The way to no, save it was- You need the, to do better. The way to save it would be to buy their product. The crazy part, there's a there's a big part of our nation that buys Chevy and Ford just because they want to support them. I'm kind of like that. There's yeah. a part of me that and buys- there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. Like that's how I've I fall into that. But the shitty part is I do that because I do that because that's kind of my way of say, showing support, right? But then at the same time too, I know deep down that I'm I'm not buying the better vehicle. Right. Yeah. Like that's right. the crazy part. And that's, and that's my point. My point is if it's a reflection on us, it's no different than- when uh, you know women will complain about the body image issues portrayed on magazines, the tabloid magazines. Oh my God, I can't believe they're always showing this. It's terrible. It's promoting terrible body image issues. But the reason why we're so pissed off at it is because it's reflecting yeah. us. It's what we're buying. It, it makes me feel bad. That's right. Or why is there a liquor store in every corner? I don't like that. That's terrible. We need to shut them down. No. <laughs> we're buying that much liquor. That's It's just a reflection yeah, right. of us. <laughs> yeah. So if we really want... American companies to survive just because they're American, which is, I think is a, a very nationalistic and ridiculous, you know, sole reason to do so. But if that's your thing, that's fine. You should definitely have that choice. If you want them to survive just because they're American and you're very nationalistic, <clears throat> then you should have bought their shit. Yeah. And don't pass these laws that then, because it's passing the buck. When we vote to make these laws to force other people to do things, it's just safety Taking nets. the responsibility All off of us. All this shit is just safety nets. Like, you know, we, we try and make things like, like the whole 10 year thing and like trying to make things so like people have jobs that like they're like have all the security and you know meanwhile like the performance and like all it's just to me it's like a lot of there's there's like two different types of people there's somebody that's seeking you know something like that that's like okay I know I have this it's super safe like it's a safe bet like uh you know and so we we structure it in a way to make it mm-hmm. safe for that reason but at the same time, then the performance, you know, the, you know, the quality kind of diminishes and, you know, so you deal with all those problems as a result of, there's, of creating that. There's this crazy uh, mentality that, uh, you know, capitalism or companies are out to take advantage of uh, people, take advantage of employees, take advantage of situations. People will say things like... Said by somebody who's never ran a company that big before. Yeah. People it's are, always said by people like yeah. that. It's like, but, you, you, I mean, this was the kind of... This was an off-air discussion you and I had where I'm like, you know, I'm always very careful about what I say about big corporate America and what these these decisions that these guys make. It's like, dude, motherfucker has like 30,000 employees working for him. Like, mm-hmm. his decisions look nothing like my decisions that I make every single yeah. day. And because he did something that somebody took a fucking spin in the news to make him like a, look like an asshole, I'm not going to jump to conclusions right away because I have no idea. For all I know... He saved fucking fifteen thousand of his three hundred thousand employees' jobs and their families and their kids. Like we well, don't know that. Well, so people will use this example all the time because uh, I know someone's thinking this. 
people will say, well, what about companies when they are horrible working conditions? What about, you know, the working conditions that existed in, you know, right after the Industrial Revolution here in America, where you had kids working and you had terrible working conditions and they were dangerous? Didn't we need, you know, government to go in and save people from capitalists? And the reality is, you first off, we've you can't compare, you have to compare the conditions with the alternative. So what I mean by that is, let's say you go to, let's say we go to India and they have a factory and they have kids working in the factory or they have people who are working ridiculous hours, not making much money. And and by our standards, it's fucking terrible. Like, I can't believe they're working in this place. It's 115 degrees in here. These people are working, you know, 12 hours a day. They're barely making any money. This is terrible. But we don't realize that that is actually an alternative to something worse, which is why it exists in the first place. And if if the the process actually starts to progress and improve as the market grows and as it market improves, which is what happens in all markets. And if we look at, like, for example, the, the jobs that are probably going to give you the most benefits and the best money and the most competitive are these markets that are like tech. Tech is very unregulated. No, who gets paid minimum wage in tech? No, Nobody does. You know what I'm saying? And it's not because they're trying to take advantage of people. It's because they're competing for more employees. And so it's not about taking advantage. It's about in reality, yeah, it's an one option. Of the most competitive environments I've ever seen to, to try and get employees. So it's like it. That's where I see like it's exciting to see that. Like one minute you see somebody like, oh my god, like uh, this this guy's a, a developer, and you know maybe we could get him on stuff. And immediately he's already plucked, Dude, and then he's getting another offer. And the problem, I, I told you guys about my niece who works for Facebook. Man, it's, they have it, that's a big piece of the business is literally just recruiting people. Oh yeah, and yeah, it's so competitive. Pl- yeah, but that's what them. you want. No, no, that's absolutely- it's 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 like people are in such high demand. Dude, I'll give you some terrible, uh, terrible examples because I think sometimes we see a problem and so we think we know what the solution is, but we don't understand the problem in the first place. So uh, let's talk about, this is a very touchy subject, but let's talk about countries that will have uh, like child labor where they have kids working in these factories. And so Western developed societies that are wealthy will go in and be like, this is absolutely terrible. I don't know how much we different need- that is than what my mom did to me as a kid. I feel like it's the same thing. It's fucking so, like yeah. leaving me home alone at five. I was doing dishes. Dude, and that's the reason why cooking you have kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what my mom used to say to me. Well, that's why so we had do you guys. your chores. Yeah. So hear me out. So hear me out on this, right? This is these are There's real examples of this. Let's see how that's different. So Western developed societies and individuals will go into these countries and be like, oh my God, look at these kids working in this factory. This is terrible. And by our standards, it is terrible. Nobody wants to see kids working uh, in these kind of factories. So sometimes what they do is they actually are quite successful. They'll go in the lobby to make laws that ban these factories from being open or employing these kids. So, and they think, I solved the problem. Then they go back. People go back and study these areas. And these kids are on the street. They're begging. They're prostituting. And they're starving. And they're dying. Because... The real problem wasn't that the kids were working in factories. The real problem was that that was the better op- option. Yeah. So we got to figure out create what, more options. How? Yeah. How can we create even better options? Yeah. Because right now, if we eliminate this option, the other option's way worse. That's yeah. why they're here yeah, in the first of place. Eliminating ad, you know, ad, that's crazy. That's a crazy way to have to think about that. Yeah. It's it, it's terrible. It's it's terrible that, that is, the option that, that the better option is still bad. But it's still the better option. So you have to understand these things before you go and pass these crazy laws and these, you know, like the homeschooling th- thing. Like, oh my God, if we homes- if, if we have government check on, you know, the homeschoolers every month, then we're going to make sure that kids aren't getting abused. At what cost? What are we causing? It's, it's the destruction of liberty. It's infringing on people's whatever. The state has way more control now, and they are they can decide to take your kid for some crazy shit. Like you don't want to go down that it path. It just feels like martial law. At it's that scary. Point. You know what I mean? It's like scary. they're coming in to, to check up on you with crazy. guns and shit. And, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> like, crazy. Get the fuck out of here. Chester just painted like this picture of some dude like kicking down the door. With I the, swear to God, like, I'm, I'm teaching my kid. Let math. me see those test scores from yeah. last week. Yeah. Like, fuck out of <laughs> here, how, guy. How Who would, are you? How would you like that? Like you're homeschooling your no kid, way, dude. And I they knock on your door. Ding dong, I'm here, and they have to walk in your house. House, inspect your home, oh, interview your kid. I would get like the scariest dogs ever. Oh, now this isn't just, passed yet, is right? That? This is what they're just trying. They're to... They're proposing it. Yeah, I, was saying, I don't think it'll pass. No way, man. It won't. So I, invasive. I wouldn't be surprised. Really? If it did? Uh, really? So invasive. I don't know. I, if I would be adamantly against that shit. I wouldn't be surprised, dude. They, they're. I mean, the shit that they pass is already. 
so crazy. And from a philosophical... We don't need, we don't need parents come, you know, like we can handle our own kids. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, no, stupid. Anyway, there we go. Bird time? Or we got gifts here? We got a box. Thrive Market. Who? It's not a person this time. It's not a, a person's box. He it's said not it a, a person. It's a general box. It's just a general box. I like these. Yeah. I feel like I already know it's what Justin's already getting. I, I hope it's. Know. I hope there's some macadamia nuts in there. Oh, I love you, Doug. You got that. <laughs> he, he smirked. Oh, what's the theme's traveling to L.A. theme? No, the the theme is keto. Oh, so k- Thrive k- Market, keto. you can go on their website and they have a drop down menu and you can choose paleo, keto, different types Holy of shit. diet. Holy shit. Are you so kidding you can, me? So you can just choose from their list and you don't wow. have to even think about oh it. Oh my God, that's brilliant. That, that is, is brilliant. Excellent. So uh, beginning here, we got I'd, some epic hickory smoked uncured bacon and boom. pork. Don't give that to <laughs> Justin. Hook me up, Doug. See, I knew it. Toasted hemp seeds with sea salt. Oh, mm-hmm. that sounds good too. Yeah. Some raw cacao I'm gonna, I'm gonna nibs. Keep these. Love them nibs. <laughs> of course, our royal Chewing Hawaiian sea salt macadamia nuts. Thank you, Doug. I love you. Some sardines. We always uh-huh. need those around That's here. That's my boy. Go and pass those, pass those on here. Yeah. I found this interesting. We got some Nut Pods original unsweetened almond and coconut dairy-free creamer. Well, mm. Show me them Nut Pods. <laughs> <laughs> I found this very interesting. I've never tried it. It's called Miracle Rice. Oh, I've had that before. Have you? So, I have. It tastes like nothing. And it tastes like oh, I thought it turned into wine. Is it like watery? It looks like bone broth. It's in water, but there's like little... So anyway, we'll try it out and see if we like it. It gave me gas. Oh, well, that's oh. that's nice. Yeah. We don't, we don't water want does that, that bro. Come but it's because it's, it's high and it's, real, it's a lot of fiber is what it is. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, this is pretty cool. We got green and red Thai coconut curry pay, uh Actually, sauce mm. from Yai's Thai. Thank you, Doug. So we can try that out. Yay. The last thing here is they have keto strips. I, oh. know, I know you guys are not big onto these, but I thought, well, you I mean, know, I like we'll to pee on stuff. I'll, so peel, I'll peel on one later. Okay, you do that. Yeah. I feel, right. like, I feel like you got this box for your, your son over here. Your fucking favorite. <laughs> huh? just, just so convenient it was a keto box when Sal's on keto like, over here. You don't like macadamia nuts and beef No, turkey no, I, I love it. Let, can we talk about for a minute how fucking awesome that is they do that? And we just kind of grazed over that. You know I, did not, that I did not know that it is beyond brilliant. If you're oh, on a yeah. particular structure of diet, like your paleo or keto or whatever, how easy does it make it where you go down? That's so great. it's a drop menu? Yeah, there's a, a menu somewhere on the site. You just drop drop it down there, choose keto, and they'll just give you suggestions for keto That's so products. great. That's freaking badass. Awesome. Yeah, that's Good awesome. job, Thrive Market. Yeah, I know. These, these guys are- Thrive for the win. This is why, this if, is why if, I really can you like buy, are they Are they public? Is Thrive Market public? No, no right? I don't think so. Because no, no. if they- bad. I'm, I'm going to tell you, stock. the second they- Yes, the second yeah. they go public, I'm buying yeah. shares because they're brilliant. Well, they're- I mean, they they're- do a good job. They are in a mad hustle right now because I believe they're trying to beat, you know, like Amazon and stuff before- Amazon's getting all their all their pieces together, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Their tentacles. And I think Thrive knows that, and so they're on a full court press for like- I mean, everything I see them come out with is, is pretty fucking brilliant, dude. Mm-hmm. It's, I'm, I'm impressed by, by the company. I mean, that's why we all love it so much. I mean, aside from the fact Forward. that- Forward thinking you oh, know yeah. they're just doing everything right oh, yeah. great brand this quaz brought to you by organifi for those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge try organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to organifi.com that's o-r-g-a-n-i-f-i.com and use a coupon code mind pump for 20 percent off at checkout out. Our first question is from Mike Lunares. What is your take Yo, on... Yo, Mikey, what's up? I feel like I know. Is that That's our Mike? boy, Mikey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, Mike. What is your take on someone wanting to get fit for proper shoes from a gait and analysis specialist before addressing issues in the feet and imbalances? What is a gait analysis uh, special. It's somebody who watches you. <laughs> I know what it is, okay. but <laughs> what is it really, though? Yeah, yeah and how are they certified? Yeah, that's like, where I'm yeah, going with this. Yeah, like Foot Locker? <laughs> yes, this is where I'm <laughs> going with yeah. this. This is where I'm going with this. Like, uh, what is that, bro? Oh, man. It says it on their name. It, it, it reminds me <laughs> when you talked about that guy on the cruise when you went to Alaska. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, he, remember he was using that as, like, a, a, a technique to kind of, like, oh, sell yes. training? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Exactly. Very much so, right? So... 
I don't even know what a, a gate analysis specialist is. It sounds like a I clever. I feel like it's on your name tag. I think it, I, that's exactly what yeah. I think it I is. I'm John. I'm your gate analysis specialist. Yeah. yeah it just, uh, it's bovine mammary extraction technician. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have you right. stand on this gel. <laughs> the milkman would pull up. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the bovine mammary extraction <laughs> technician over here. Yeah, that's what I am. No, that's exactly what it is. So it's that in itself, I think it's funny, right? That. Uh, we're we're probably we're just uh, offended like some guy right I know I'm sorry there's probably there's yeah. actually probably a really good gate analysis specialist out there that's really good at their job hey okay, man so yeah what it, Doug, oh beautiful Doug you're looking the, it up the for the gate us. and clinical movement analysis society oh there's a whole society we it's just physicians offended. hold on it's physicians allied health professionals engineers biomechanists biomechanists and scientists working together to advance scientific knowledge technical capabilities. And clinical practice in the field of human movement. You know, so, smart people use a lot of words. Yeah, I, mean, I know. That sounds <laughs> legit. Yeah. There's no reason to use. It's all, all words. fluff, bro. Come yeah. on. So I don't know if that's even the same thing. Anyway, so it says yeah. the Gate and Clinical Movement Analysis Society. So yeah. I, I, don't, I don't. I think this is just like that. Probably you... is made up of scientists versus like our, <laughs> yeah, yeah. our Foot Locker guy. Right. So, <laughs> well, let's assume. Yeah, let's assume, like, yeah, let's assume they are a badass. Yeah. Let's let's let's, right, let's, right, let's right. assume they're Benefit a badass. Of the doubt. The question. The end of the question asked before addressing foot issues. So absolutely not. And here's the thing. No, they're not, Sal. And you, we can we don't we can't assume that they are, because there's no way that someone a a, a biomechanic specialist okay would see somebody and see an imbalance on their gait and crutch it with a, a doctor soles or an insert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know any that would do that? That would what? That would would crutch it that way. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know anybody. I feel like that's the what. That's would, why I said I don't, it, I don't feel like you. I, that's it's the a Western, method to sell uh, inserts, really. Well, well, I think it's the Western medicine approach. The Western medicine approach is you're moving a, a particular way, and so what we're going to do is we're going to give you these insoles or shoes to correct your your movement. I feel like that's you know that's that's the and I've seen people like this. I've yeah. seen people come to me and be like. Oh, I have these special inserts. Okay, so let's assume this person is a fucking scientist. They are trying to use Western medicine approaches by crutching this fucking issue. Right. Our opinion, I know for sure, collectively, will be that it's not a good idea. Yeah, that's no. not the that's and, not and, the thought process we'd right. use. Now, I worked with somebody who a while ago. So I I had the pleasure of having an exceptionally talented uh, individual who was a physical therapist work in my um, wellness facility. And she became very proficient in, in gait and watching people walk. In fact, that was part of her assessment. She'd, we had mm -hmm. this hallway, and she'd walk people walk. She'd have them take their shoes off. And then based on that, she would do things. And she had somebody who came to her who had special inserts because they, they were all messed up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I used to love – one of the, my favorite things about training with a lot of other smart people is without them knowing, I used to learn from them. Like I'd even ask them questions. Oh, yeah. that you just watch. I would watch and listen. Yeah. And what she did was, is she didn't take the inserts out all of a sudden. You know no, what I'm you saying? you can't do that. No, it's too much. It's just like what I did with my uh, squatting with uh, the high heels, you know, yeah. squatting in squat shoes and then going to like high top shoes and then going to like regular exactly. shoes and then going to chuck shoes and then going barefoot. I like, love exactly. how you call my heels. Right. <laughs> well, they were heels. Yeah. Yeah, they were. They are. I mean, they got, they got pretty high heels in them. So. That does sound sexy. But that, that, that's the same. Right. You can't, you don't want to take somebody who does have inserts and you want to rip them right out. But it's not, this is somebody that Mike is asking. That they're getting their their gait analysis right, and the specialist is telling them, "Here's your your you know your shoes that are customly made to you." Which, by the way, half that stuff is bullshit most of the time, anyways. But let's just pretend like this one isn't bullshit. This is somebody who is fucking certified smart guy, and they're telling you to put crutches in your in your shoes. Not a good idea. Definitely no, not a good idea. That's by the way the best title I've ever heard what? on my name tag: what? certified smart guy. <laughs> hey, I'm your certified smart guy. Hey, hey, hey. welcome. I'm hey, the certified I, smart guy. I feel like he does like the finger gun. Like yeah, yeah. Who did that to us? Yeah. Was that Paleo FX? Was didn't Aubrey Marcus do that to us? Yeah, yeah he did the whole like pew pew. Yeah, yeah, yeah one over the head. That was one awkward. To the side. Yeah. So, um, if you have to wear inserts to correct your gait and fix you or whatever, don't just take them off. You're going to cause lots of problems. But slowly wean yourself off with smaller inserts or by training barefoot and then wearing the inserts regularly. But fixing the feet, but, wait, first wait, off, can take I, a long I, time. I got I to give you more information here because I feel like you, what you don't know about this person that I know, because I know Mike. Mike is a coach for Orange Theory. 
So he's probably asking this. I'm going to assume that this is somebody who takes one of these classes, who gets on he a treadmill. He time to do all that, does he? Right. He's running on a treadmill. This person is going to go get inserts so they can go and exercise and run on a treadmill and, and row yeah, and do, I can see that. do Orange Theory. That's why he's asking. I guarantee yeah. it. I mean, Mike's a coach for there. I guarantee he's probably been trying to get through to this person and say, hey, it's probably not a good idea that you just run on the treadmill and go see a gait analysis that's going to just give you some shoes to crutch it and then keep going. Yeah. Mike's a smart guy. He listens to Mind Pump all the time. I know for sure yeah. the dude's probably trying to tell him, listen, what you need to do is you need to address your foot, your disconnect to your feet, yeah, your feet and your, your ankle, ankles. ankle mobility and address all that by doing proper movements, then get into running and not God, the other way around. You want to talk about dysfunction, though. My God. Like Once we started learning about the, like, the feet and the ankles, once we met with Dr. Brink, it sucks because... I was literally in a state of unconscious incompetence. I had no idea how big of a deal it was, how important it was. And I didn't even know, unless it was something extreme, like I could see severe pronation or, or supination. I could see that before, yeah. but I couldn't see anything else. I literally couldn't see it because I didn't know, I didn't even know what to you, look for. Yeah, yeah. arch and like everything. Now, now when I'm walking around outside, I can't help yeah. but see people and oh, be like, super obvious. Everybody. Visible. Everybody's fucked up. It's funny too because like doing the FRC course, like uh, I was there for the, for one of the days and, and they were talking about uh, feet and like he, he, he was like, you know, talking about shoes and like what we've been conditioned. Um, you know, to and how we've compensated as a result of our shoes and all this stuff. And he's, he calls it the term that he used for shoes is like feet coffins. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I was that, just that like, a, oh, it's great. That is a great term. It's true. Yeah. And, then, and then we have those pictures of uh, of uh, pro basketball players' feet. Yeah, which, LeBron. When I, oh. everything's just smashed together, so, it turns into like one pile of mush. And you can almost guarantee, like right now, he's a a crazy athlete who who pushes through all that and you can't tell but I guarantee that that's something that will cause major issues for him down the road oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what what happens you have to compensate everything else has to compensate for your totally dysfunctional feet you know or ankles so I mean one of the best things you could do for your training is address all these imbalances and focus on them and by the way while you're doing this you're still working out so it's not like yeah, you're sure moving. you're not going to be able to work out super intense and all that stuff but it's going to pay you back tenfold by working on the So things. I'm going to tell Mike too this is what I used to tell clients when I was at Orange Theory when they would come up with a, with something similar to me I, first of all I would tell them absolutely do not go get uh inserts into your shoes let me teach you some you know foot exercises you can do some ankle mobility let's pay it, let me point out some of the things that I see whether you you're pronating or supinating figure out what's going on with you and then give you the proper movements to help and work on that and I want you to work on that as much as you possibly can when I don't see you. And absolutely, anytime you come in my class, I want to see you. when everyone else is kind of warming up and doing things, you're over there doing those drills. And then when you get on the treadmill, you're not running, you're walking. And when you're walking, you're thinking about your gait. You're thinking yeah. about yeah. the what, what I've how I've taught you to walk. You teach them the intent. Right. So you get to still do your, you're doing a little bit of cardio. You're still hitting, you're hitting neat. You're still moving. You're still exercising. And you're working on an imbalance that your gait analysis is telling you, only they're telling you, here, throw these in your shoes because you could throw those in your shoes and go run on a treadmill and you will initially feel better what do you what do you guys think about uh do you think the orange theory how long do you think this this it's still on the rise bad bro. is the, is the stock gonna, is still rising right now right so they when, just, when, just, you, they when were, you guys uh, predict they're it's just drop. converting all the crossfit people when, when you guys can start yeah fall no out. that's it's not going for a, it's going to go for longer than i predicted CrossFit, crossfit's flattened out crossfit's yeah, well, growth they're, is, they're taking all of them yeah so so because i see orange theory Having a sharp fall at some point, they don't have as much. I don't. Here's why. Here's why. I, I don't go, think they're going to go gone. So you know me. I, I was originally the one who was saying like, you know, build these things up. I'm telling my boy Brendan forever, like, build these. Fuck. He's got like 17 now. I'm like, sell those oh motherfuckers within the next three years. Wow. I've been saying that for a long time because they're going to be at their peak for sure around that time. But they may hang around for a while. I think they'll hang around as long as CrossFit hangs around. How about yeah. that? That's what uh, I think. I think CrossFit's, well... This is why. This is why. Let me tell you why, okay, mm -hmm. before you, you say anything. I see pot pluses and minus. Here's well. why. Because if CrossFit, it really is the answer to CrossFit. It really is 
you know, when you unpack it's all like of it, CrossFit Pilates. it's for the people who <laughs> would want to do CrossFit. It's for the people that would want to, but can't do CrossFit and are too scared to do CrossFit or either or like, cause they have had, they're, they're normally a little bit older. They've de- had some sort of injury or issue, or they've known somebody who's been hurt doing CrossFit, yeah. but they, they love the group class setting. They love the, the circuit the intensity. They love the intensity. They love the circuit base. They love the competitiveness yeah. of the scoring and beating each other. They, I mean, Orange Theory nailed it because what they did was they said, we see the fall off that's happening from CrossFit from all the injuries and the people that are complaining because of all the bad coaches and that the growth of that. Mm-hmm. So we're going to swoop in and we're going to make a similar product that's safer and more family and friendly. And mm-hmm. that's what they did. They cut out all the Olympic movements. And now it's just a circuit-based class. They can create. They create the same competitiveness, just like they do with leaderboards and size CrossFit. They do the same thing, only they're using. Yeah, I'm and more. They, they attach it to what do they attach it to? Fucking uh, oh, what, heart rate? epoch. Oh, epoch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, epoch. old 1972 science. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's been around yeah. forever. I'm firmly convinced that <clears throat> this style of training will never go away. Like it, <clears throat> the group setting, the intensity, the competitive, like. It's going to be recreated, even if Orange Theory goes. It's going to be recreated as something else. I agree. That's maybe with VR goggles or something <laughs> and, stupid. And so, I, I, being somebody who worked there for a couple of years and got a chance to kind of peer in, right? It reminds me a lot of what I felt and saw, which was what drew me to them originally with Twenty Four oh, Fitness. The, the growth of Twenty Four. Yes, they're yeah. just they they they're not they're not just growing because they're popular. They're they're making moves. They're making moves. They're they're bettering their product. They're on the that, and I used to I remember working for Twenty Four Hour Fitness and people would always tell me about other fitness chains they're popping up. And I'm like, uh, I don't even sweat. I work for the best one in the world. Mm-hmm. Like literally, it's the, they're the only ones that reach billions of dollars. We're so we're so five steps ahead of everybody else. Like, oh, that's cool. They're creating that. Our company is like did that six months ago. We're already on to the next thing. They're kind of like that for the fitness, the fitness, and they're and they're really combining fitness and tech, and they're 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 forward thinking. So I think they're going to hang around yeah, as they, long as CrossFit hangs around. They definitely. That's got my call the, now. The tech, uh, which is going to propel them mm. like pretty far. Mike, next, make her get Prime or Prime Pro. There you go. Next question is from MK Fitness three eight eight nine. What is the best way for someone to overcome being neurologically tight? meaning they constantly feel their muscles are tight but have great range of motion and pass stretching tests. Can someone constantly feel tight or restricted and it just be a neurological symptom? How does one improve that? It's, first off, it's, all, is, it's always neurological. Right. Yeah. So all muscles Starts there first. All muscles, tightness, pliability, you know, extensibility, flexibility, whatever you want to call it. Because with, without it, that signal, your muscle would just lay there like a dead fish. It'd be super lax. It just if you, super, it'd yeah. be like cutting it out of your system, throwing it on the ground. It's without the central yep. nervous system. Yep. Meat. Yep. Yep. Right. So it, it it's always a neurological issue. Um, you're stressed. That's that's what it sounds like. That's exactly what it sounds. If you all, have, ten, all tensed up. Yeah. If boom. You, nailed it. If you have a good range of motion and you can stretch really well, but then throughout the day you're just tight. Yeah. Uh, you gotta you gotta release some shit because right. it sounds to me like you're, you're holding on. Yeah. You're you're placing your body in a protective. Uh, kind of position throughout the day because of whatever daily stress or whatever's going on in your mind is going on. Because mm-hmm. remember, if I, from a uh, from a purely brain perspective, if I imagine, if I truly believe and imagine or dream that a lion is coming after me or versus seeing one in my brain, it's exactly the same. Now, of course, it doesn't have the 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 same feedback as if a lion actually scra- you know clawed at me or whatever. But in my brain, it's exactly the same thing. So. When you're stressed out, your body is in this state of fight or flight, fight or flight, or protect. Right? It's trying to protect you. So, what does a stressed out body look like? Well, shoulders are probably hunched and rolled forward a little bit. Why? Because your vitals are in front of you. You want to protect mm-hmm. yourself. Um, your arms are kind of in tight. Your head is down again because you're protecting the front of your throat. Um, you 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 occupy less space. This is something that's a, a big one. Like people who are confident now, I tend po- to occupy. More I want to point out though to this person that you don't necessarily need to be all hunched over around like that for this still to be that symptom though. So because this person could be listening to you right now, going like, "Oh, I, I have great posture," yeah. you know, because you could still have decent looking yeah. posture, what you th- or what you think is. Decent. I'm just I'm just going with like. Yeah, what no, you you're right. See, you're, yeah. you're right. But I just want the audience that's yeah. listening or the person who's listening to this. You answer it right now that because you could you could throw them off by them thinking like, "Oh, if well, I'm not I'm think not. about it this way, if you were." outside you were hanging out and all of a sudden behind you without you knowing a loud explosion goes off what 
what would you do with your body instantly as you freaked out over the right, side? Yeah. You'd shrug your shoulders, you'd real quick. So your body's doing that to a lower level. And what I mean by that is your upper trapezius is probably activated uh, or levitator scapulae because you're, you're kind of tight. Um, you may feel tightness in your diaphragm, uh, which might feel like chest tightness because you're not breathing fully. So you need to kind of relax a little bit. And in order to do that, um, you have to focus on both the emotional and the physical. And what I mean by that is massage helps because it temporarily loosens muscles up and that feedback will then tell your body to relax, tell you mentally to relax. Don't you yeah. think it's so I- crazy how we, we have this natural instinct that does, like think about it, it such a great analogy you just gave right there, Sal. I don't know if, how many people realize that. Like, isn't it crazy how that is? Like no one taught us that, no one trained us, anything like that. But every one of us right now, if we're to, Take turns scaring the other one when jumping out. You get in that yeah. posture. We would all we would all do Whoa, would do the same th- yeah. same thing. It's protective. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? There's that, also a universal that, that our, our brain works that fast. There's too. there's also a universal uh, victory pose that people have. Like if somebody wins right, something, right. You throw your arms up. You throw your arms up and, and what are your you doing? Chest comes up. What are you doing? You are showing dominance. You're exposing yeah. all your vital parts under your arms, all your arteries. Everything's open. Your sh- your head is up. Because you're telling so people around primal, you, dude. and you're taller. Than it's everybody. so it's so crazy. That's right. So uh, so definitely, I would say get massage. I would say focus on your breathing because your breathing does a lot to dictate how you feel. So belly breathing is a great way to Go get your body. Races. Yeah, figure out how to tap into the parasympathetic. It sounds like you're just you're just driving 100% sympathetic all day long. Mm-hmm. And even though you may have you know the flexibility or the range of motion that you can achieve um, to pass these tests or whatever the standards is, like it, it just sounds like you're just carrying that same operating system all throughout your Dude, day. Dude, I'll never forget. I had when I had my wellness facility, I had uh, a situation happen within the business that was really stressful. So I was like super stressed out. I was handling that. I was trying to manage the business. I had shit going on at home, and so I felt. I didn't realize how stressed out I felt because I'm the kind of person that. Even with lots of stress, it's hard for me to identify that I'm stressed out. I just keep going unless it's so extreme or I become so self-aware that I can I can see it. And I'm better at it now, but I was really bad at it before. So one of my coworkers convinced me to do a yin yoga class. It was actually the first yin yoga class I ever did. Now, yin yoga is uh, you, get in, you, you get on the floor, you get into a pose or a stretch, and you hold that shit for like three minutes. And the music is soft and nobody's talking in there and it's quiet and when you're sitting in a stretch in a room quietly uh for a while and you're sitting in a stretch for three minutes weird things start to happen like you start to realize how tight you are Mm -hmm. because all of us first you're like okay this is as far as i'm gonna stretch and the next thing you know oh shit i just went another two inches this is weird next thing you know oh my god i went another two inches and this was a it was an uh an hour and a half long class by the end of the class i remember distinctly telling my friend we walked out and she's like how do you feel and i'm like i've never felt i haven't felt this this level of peace in such a long time i didn't know it existed because i was in this state of stress that consumed me that i didn't even realize i was really in Mm -hmm. so well this is really the science behind the woo-woo-ness of what everybody talks about yoga i mean there's so much woo-woo around it but there's actually some really good science to support why you fucking feel good so I, i mean if you could take a yin yoga class Highly recommend doing that. Meditation, walking outside barefoot in the grass, like all these things that help relax you because 100% you're stressed out. That's I'm going to place my money on that right now I know, I and know. make that I, claim. I, you, you know, I feel it. too like going. We just, we just had somebody who were talking about Prime Prime Pro for this is another example, you know, of a client that wanted to kind of like still go to the gym and like exercise or do things. Like I would put them in fortification sessions, uh, sessions that are uh, helping yep. correct any sort of imbalance they have. That could be... Maps Prime. Right. I think that could be a very... That's a very... Uh, I love to do... When I'm not feeling in the mood to go slam and hit the weights or get after it, Like I love to just go through priming movements or go through all our mobility drills and flow and get, get into that. Because you still get a nice workout in and you're also working on... It's a... I don't know. I get a very similar feeling as what I get like when I take a yoga class. Because when I yoga class, I feel the same way after I do like a mobility session for 30 minutes too. Yep. So. Next up is E Braga 06. All of you have been training for over a decade. In which direction do you see your individual training in the next 5, 10, 20 years? And where do you see yourself from a business standpoint? Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I see my individual training 
slowly morphing into uh, a really uh, a much more intuitive uh, way of training. Now I'm much more intuitive now than I was five years ago. So I I, I can only imagine that in the next you know ten or twenty years it's going to take on a completely new different role. I think honestly, and if I'm being quite honest, I think my training will require in the future less gym workouts. So I still, I think I'm still going to always lift at least two days a week, heavy in the gym and more. And I'm hoping in 20 years, I have this opportunity or so to be able to do this or 10 years to uh, be able to do a lot of my stuff outside. So I'll, you know, two days a week of lifting and then every day will involve some type of outdoor activity, whether it's swimming or rowing or hiking, because I, uh, I'm starting to find now that I get way more out of that then because I get a lot out of working out in the gym again don't get me wrong I still do but I get a lot of a lot more different differently from the outdoor type of stuff like me and Jessica you know we've done we've had a few weekends where you know I don't have the kids and she doesn't have to work and we'll just go hike and we'll do a gnarly hike you know we'll be hiking for four or five hours we'll take water with us and we'll fast the whole time and when I get back, I'm exhausted. I know I've burned tons of calories. I've done climbing because these hikes are challenging. But what I get from it is so um, it's so incredible. I would love to be able to do that on a regular basis. So I feel like my training will probably look more like that in the future. Um, from a business standpoint, you know, I see I, – I really – and I, who knows what the future holds. I think you'll be promoted by that time. What? I think you'll be promoted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I would – I, I really would love to be working with these gentlemen forever, whether we're with Mind Pump or not. I, I love working with these guys that we constantly grow. I'm always impressed by them. Um, and uh, I, I want to, you know, I hope to be able to do, to work with them for up until I retire at some point. Personally, for me, at some point, I would like to write a book or I would like to uh, do something where my commentary is more on just strictly current events and opinion and stuff like that just because I really enjoy it um, but uh, but other than that I don't see too much different from what we're doing you know what we're mm -hmm. doing now mm -hmm. well you just I like that uh, yeah somewhat on the intuitive front but as far as training is concerned like I know that for me it's less about being the strongest the hero in the gym you know and like that sort of young man's mentality towards training um I feel like I've I've matured a bit um, as far as like the way that I treat my body and uh, press the limitations. But at the same time, I don't want to get soft. I don't want to get complacent. Um, I don't want to be in a place where, you know, I lose any abilities or strength that I've achieved. And so um, I would love to just keep expressing movement um, in different directions and loading it accordingly and, you know, learn, be open to learning new techniques um, and especially the unconventional route. I've sort of drifted into that direction and I want to continue to pursue that um, and, and get more versed in certain tools. And um, I really, I really enjoy um, uh, body weight training and um, I've been doing that with my kids quite a bit and it's just, I just like approaching it more now uh, as play. And, and something that is a continuous just part of my day instead of it like, ah, I got like a workout I'm getting, mm -hmm. you know, instead of that, I'm just like, if I'm watching TV for like, this is what usually happens throughout the day. So I'm watching TV, I get home, I'm like, oh God, okay, I'm sitting down. And then, you know, my youngest is like, dad, check this out. Come on down, let's, let's work out. And I'm like, yeah, all right. And I get up and then we're like, we're doing stuff on the rings and I'm climbing on stuff and, you know, it's just fun and it, and, it, and it's exhausting. Cause like once I get into it and I get the momentum in it, like I'll start, I'll start doing more, you know, awesome. and, and I feel, I feel the effects on my body and that's fun for me. You know, that's all I need. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I know that like, <laughs> that doesn't like register to, to some people that listen as far as like, you know, they have like very specific PRs and, you know, goals and you know, I've been there, you know, and I, I, and I, I feel like I did, I did pretty well as far as squats and bench and, you know, like all that kind of stuff. And, um, that's just not where my head is at these days going forward. But 
I, I mean, we'll still do it. You bet, you bet your ass I'll still do it. Um, but so that's, that's training. Um, I think as far as business is concerned, um, I definitely like, I fucking enjoy the freedom of, of what we've created and the, and just the, the ability to go and I don't even know, like, I don't know what it looks like, but I'm excited. So (laughs) whatever the hell it is where we're creating something together, um, I, I want to be a part of it kind of like Sal was saying, like, it's just, it's a long-term thing. Um, I feel like whatever we do is going to be awesome and fun. And, um, if it's not, I think we all will know and we'll, we'll, you know, abandon ship and we'll do something else. that's cool. But, uh, at the same time, so you have individual goals. I mean, I tried, I tried, you know, my, my hands in, in an invention and, you know, maybe I'll pursue something like that eventually again. Um, you know, once it makes a little more sense timing wise and all that, but, uh, really like, I'm just, I'm just trying to like enjoy the process and, um, you know, kind of go with the flow. I think, uh, let's see here, five, 10, 20 years from now, it's hard to say that far out because God knows how I'll be moving in 20 years. But I, I, you know, there's some things that I, I think I'm pretty certain I'll be doing. I think I'll I'll be training kind of like a bodybuilder, uh, mobile bodybuilder, because I really enjoy, um, I really really enjoy sculpting the physique. I got a big kick out of that um, when I competed, and I didn't think I would. I didn't think that was going to be a big deal for me. I'm I'm a competitive person, so I knew that I'd have this drive to compete and win, but I didn't know that I was going to have this like all of a sudden this newfound passion of like, whoa, I can sculpt my physique. I kind of always knew that as a trainer, but it, when I actually put it to practice, I didn't realize how much I would fall in love with that. That It's almost like an art form to me now. So I do see myself getting not getting back to the competitiveness of that. Like I have no desire to get on a stage ever again and compete whatsoever. And I know a couple of years ago I was saying, oh, maybe I do it for charity. I have no desire right now to do anything like that. But I do like the style of training. I do like sculpting the physique, but I also do recognize – uh, what it can cause and all the issues that it can cause if that's all I'm focused on. So I do think that I'll integrate a, you know, a mobility based program, but with pieces of bodybuilding training, because I just enjoy it. Now that's saying that that's could be where I go, but I'm also the person who so easily can be distracted because something new is out and I want to challenge myself and I want to apply myself and my knowledge and see if I can go after it. So I'm just as nutty to go a different direction, and honestly, that I was really I had some I was setting some high goals that I didn't even express to anybody else. I'll thank God because I went and tore my Achilles related to playing basketball, and I'm having this, you know, right now having a time to reflect because I don't know if I'm going to pursue that, and that's tough for me. I've never really said to myself, okay, I'm going to go do something, and then and then thought like, oh shit, maybe I'm not going to do this. And tearing the Achilles was a big deal to me because. I mean, it revealed that I have some other issues that are going on besides just the Achilles, but it also wasn't an injury that was caused by another person. It was all myself. Like I was all by myself and it just went and it's like, fuck, dude, I'm in no place right now to be pushing my body towards hard, aggressive goals in that arena if this if my body's responding like this already. So I don't know what I'll do with that, but I definitely think that I'll keep like the bodybuilding going on with some sort of mobility in those 5, 10, 20. And as far as business is concerned, man, I, I, I have to echo what the boy said. I, I think and what I love about these guys since day one, I mean, first of all, we created it with the ability, knowing that there may come a day that we would sell it, right? We knew that, you know, we're smart enough. We've been around long enough. We've all built enough businesses before that, hey, if even if this is amazing and it grows so big and everybody's making the money they want to do and they're loving what they're doing, there may come a time where if not one or two or all of us say, hey, dude, I'm, you know, it's too much now. My family, I, I, I've set myself up in a position where I don't have to ever do anything again. I think that, you know, I want to walk or do something like that. that. That'll be a conversation that we might have to have one day. And so we built the business like that you know, knowing that, and we still continue to build it that way. So I think that is a very realistic possibility. I know we will be faced with that one day. I know one day we'll all have to sit in a room and go, okay, guys, you know, let's check in here. Like, 
Is this what we want to do for the rest of our lives? And do we love it that much? And I really personally, and I told the guy, I literally just talked about this the other day with you guys that I believe that we're going to be faced with an option like this because I'm as much as I pay attention to um, how every time the business scales, how incredibly more challenging and stressful it becomes. As much as the the money that comes with that is awesome, it also brings on all these other responsibilities with that. And that just continues to multiply as the company gets bigger. So, you know, now we're in that that, you know, uh nine to twelve person like employee facility. And so once we start getting, I think, to a point, and I know that's a bad example is to use people as as the size of a company, because you could have a small company that makes a lot of money. I do believe as far as the responsibility goes, there will come a time where the guys and I will have to all go, okay, maybe we'd rather carve back on some of our responsibility, just do the parts that we're very passionate about. Like, cause something we've all agreed on is we love this part. Yeah. Like it's very therapeutic. It's, it's fun. It's, in, it's easy. We That'd be a dream if we just did that. Right. And, and yeah. so we, we, and, and I, and I know like any other business that I built that what ends up happening is you spend a lot of times doing the things that you don't love. To, I think there's a problem too with a lot of people that fail at business is they 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 over glorify the whole entrepreneurship thing cuz it's like in reality you spend 80 time 80% of your time even in a very successful business doing the shit you don't want to do you only get about 20% of the time mm-hmm. doing doing the stuff you love sometimes to do sometimes less yeah sometimes less and so i think if we start to see that that piece get carved out where we're doing less and less of what we love and more and more of the things that we don't even care about, you know, running behind the scenes systems and managing people that nobody else even sees or does has nothing to do with us talking on these microphones. I could definitely foresee us having that conversation, but without a doubt, uh, I think we all agree that, you know, even if we moved on from this project in the future, which would be nowhere anytime soon, I know that uh, we would probably do something else together for sure. Next question is from Megabop. Adam, what does your neat look like since the boot? I was put in one today and can't imagine not having walks with my pup. Oh, God. You know, before you answer, Adam, I want to say something about this, is that uh, watching you go through what you're going through, Achilles tear, um, going off synthetic testosterone, uh, you have uh, it challenging, uh, mm-hmm. to say the least, um, for anybody who's ever gone from being on testosterone to off, after, as long as you know you you were on it, um, that by itself uh, can cause lots of issues. The least of which are things like depression. Then on top of it being limited to not being able to move, which one of the best things you could do when you feel like shit right. is move. So now that's taken from you. Yeah. And uh, I want to say you've been handled. You've handled yourself uh, in a way that uh, really exemplifies your character, which is very strong Mm -hmm. and uh, very growth-minded. And uh, I know I speak on behalf of the guys. Very impressive uh, uh, seeing you handle it. Well, I don't think... You've only been an asshole like 20%. (laughs) 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 Which is only 5% of the normal, right? So It's gone gone down, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I actually think I'm more of a lover right now. I feel like, yeah. Katrina thinks I'm more cuddly and lovey right now. She's like, Yeah, without the testosterone in me, she feels like I'm more... I'm sweeter, I'm nicer, right? So... you got all the flowers just for... For Valentine's you know, Day, to right? Sal's note before I get into the boot thing, um, 100%, uh, no doubt in my mind that what I've been going through for the last six months has hands down been probably off the top of my head, some of the most challenging times I've ever been through mentally, you know, and then actually now physically with the Achilles, mm-hmm. like before the Achilles, like you said, before the Achilles, the whole testosterone thing is a mind fuck in itself. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's really tough, especially when you talk about your libido, being a man, being in my mid thirties right now, being in a relation, in a great relationship for seven years. Like there's a lot of other fucking dynamics that I don't even share and talk about on the show that, sure. that comes, comes with that. And then I, the, the crazy part that those that don't know this, I, you know, at January, right before January hit, I had set this goal at the beginning of the year. I was going to pursue two things, uh, that I was very passionate about as a child. And so the crazy part was I know the internal motivation of why I did that. I knew that I was kind of battling like this, you know, I didn't feel good about myself. My testosterone is super low. I have no motivation to train. I have no libido. So what better than to, you know, put, pour myself into things that I know I'm very passionate about? Like I've never felt flow state like I've felt felt it on a basketball court or or riding down a mountain. That's to me the closest thing to being in flow state I've ever felt in my life. So the thought process for me was, okay, I'm not allowed. I'm not going to allow this depression to build up and feel sorry for myself. I'm going to fucking go do something. And not only I go do something, I'm going to do things that I know I'm passionate about. That's going to help 
pull me through this time that I'm kind of going through right now. So talk about a crushing blow. I mean, I literally have got a brand new snowboard in the box inside my, my, my room, right, right now, which I didn't need, but I wanted to because it was part of like being excited about what I was yeah. doing. I, I can I can you afford to go do the basketball. Like oh, I brought three. I, have, I bought three basketballs. Oh, I bought man. two new pairs of Jordans. Like Shit. I bought a new basketball bag. I got two pumps. I mean, I'm all set, bro. My George, yeah. I mean, I literally and, and 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 I know what I was doing. Like I didn't need all those things. That was again. You know, me feeding that I'm I'm feeling down. I'm feeling kind. Of, so I like things. You guys know I'm a fucking I'm bougie. So I like stuff. So it's like treating myself. I'm also going to be putting goals forward for me. So I was being very positive about the situation that I was in, and then to get to get the fucking Achilles tear on the second day of playing basketball. You know, January what or whatever so it was. Air out of your tires. Oh, dude, it was yeah. it was a crushing blow. Like I don't know. I've I've and to, to have done it myself. Like not at somebody else, some asshole stepping on me or whatever like that. So that was that has been a motherfucker for that. I mean that like nothing else I could ever think of. And if it wasn't for you guys and and being here and this show and and listeners, man, because I've got a ton of support from so many people sending me DMs and I read every one of them and I try to respond to everybody. I think I get to about 99% of everybody that DMs me and I appreciate all the love that everybody sent uh, my way and, and and all of it helps for sure. And this helps and being around you guys, it's always motivating and stuff. So this has been one of the hardest times for me going through that for all those reasons. I mean, it's just been like, it's been a shit storm when it comes to my, my health. And then, then you add to that right now, the Achilles tear. And then I get into this boot. So the biggest motherfucker of this this boot is I can't walk around, man. You I mean if I walk around for let's say 2000 steps, which would be a very low day anyways, my back is killing me yeah. because it's like walking if you're Because one foot is elevated. Yeah, and, I, and, and that's I, like your your meditation process, is, right? Is, yeah. yeah, I'm big I'm the guy who talks about neat all the time. Yeah. I'm not Mr. Not neat, that, dude. But you walk your dogs, those are your like Every, your kids. Yeah. So many things, right? Well, Katrina and I go for hikes and walks on a very regular basis. So the boot all of a sudden is like, fuck, I can't do that either. And still, don't don't get me wrong. I tried to muscle through it. I was like, I'm just gonna just fucking walk, you know, to give shit. <laughs> but then, so then, what ends up happening? Now my back hurts all the time. Now I end up wanting to have painkillers because my back is killing me all the fucking time. So then, and I know better than to go let that take control of my life because I've been in that position before. So then I'm battling back and forth with that. Like fuck, okay, well I'll just sit at home. So then I'm at the point where now I'm eating one meal a day because if I eat any more than that, I put on put weight. Put it on, yeah. You know, so it's definitely been, and so I'm in some of the worst shape I've been in probably five years. And the way that I've stayed positive with all this, I'm getting to your question eventually <laughs> <laughs> in a long roundabout way. The, the way <laughs> that I, 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 I have learned to deal with this is my, my, I don't, I don't, I say it all the time on the show. Like I don't identify with a, being a bodybuilder. I don't identify with being an athlete. I don't I, identify with being a soft Achilles torn, you know, you know, feeling uh, skinny and no muscle. I don't identify with that guy. Those are all, that's not who I am, you know? And so right now my body is going through some of its hardest time and I, I just have to be okay with that. And so I'm just kind of embracing all of it. I'm not stressing out about it. If I, I'm still was at a baby shower and normally I wouldn't be drinking and caring about my physique and this and that. And if, if ever I should be really caring about it, it's right now. But then at the same time too, I'm like, no, I'm not. I mean, with my my best friend, we're we're enjoying time. Like this is not the time for me to be about me anyway. So I think that what's getting me through this right now is is accepting it. Is accepting that I'm in a position right now. It's made me appreciate other parts of my life, like walking, like God. What I can't wait to be healed, to just go for a fucking one-hour walk. I cannot wait to throw a book in my ears, which there you go. There's something that I have latched on to because um, I haven't been able to do anything physically is I've been reading a lot. So, I mean, to me, my, the best advice I feel like uh, I ever received uh, from someone, I wish I remember who it was. It was a long time ago, but they had told me that, man, when you, when you, when you have, because shit's bound to happen for everybody, whether it be family, whether it be relationship, whether it be work, like, Everybody has shit. Nothing special about what I'm going through right now. Everybody has fucking everybody shit. Everybody poops. But everybody also has something something that they can latch on to their life that is good, that is positive. That and and when you start to latch on to that and put your energy and focus in that and let that flourish, let that grow, get better in that craft, whatever that is. And so, you know, I, when re when relationships were bad, I used to, I love work. And so I put it into work. And when I'm excelling at work, that always makes me feel a little bit better about myself or sports. And so whatever it is for you. So right now, like 
I really have a lot of those things I can't do. I'm reading. I can read. I can grow. You know, so I can continue to learn. I can continue to get smarter. I continue to to expand that way. So that's been kind of like my saving grace is, you know, I've been digesting a lot of information. I've been reading a lot. That makes me feel good. And I'm around the corner right now. So I've got probably another two weeks before it's, you know, completely healed. And then I'll be starting the rehab process. But when you're in the boot, you know, I'm, I can't really do neat because I, like I was saying, you're, you're, it's like you, and you don't really want to because unless you had, okay, now what I could do, I didn't do this and I could have done this and I thought about it too. So this is an option for you is, uh, I know the 24 hour fitness by my house actually has one of these or they used to is the, uh, arm bike. yeah, the cardio for, for, uh, like people in a wheelchair, right? right. right? So it's just the arm What's bike. What's that called? I, it, I don't know. Uh, I think right. it's, I don't yeah. even know what it's called, right. but it's like, it's like a recumbent bike for, but for not for your legs, but for your arms. Right. And so I could have done, I could have done that to get my cardio, but then I also, could not worry about it and not and not make a big deal about it to go drive all the way to a gym to do this just to burn a thousand calories just so I, I, I just gonna eat less be okay with I'm gonna I'm gonna lose some muscle right now I'm gonna be so, a little bit softer than what I'm used to being I'm probably carrying myself around 14 15 percent body fat which is very high for me so and just be okay with that and be learn to be comfortable with kind of where I'm at now and know that when I'm healthy and my body can move I can change that you know, I can drop a percent every week consistently. Oh, yeah. Excellent. You know, so. For sure. Excellent, brother. Thanks. Appreciate you. Uh, two days left, right? Isn't it two days left? Yes. Last Only two days. two days left Uno for dos. Hurry up. our MAPS HIT promotion. So we have a program called MAPS HIT High Interval High Intensity Interval Training. It is the best fat burning program we have. Uh, go to mindpumpmedia.com. Enter the code HIT LAUNCH. That's HIT spelled with two I's, H-I-I-T. You'll get $20 off and a free t-shirt. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.